Using a scale of 1 to 10, the nursing staff must teach patients to report their level of discomfort on a 1 to 10 scale, with 10 being the most severe. The patient should describe the discomfort in terms of location, intensity, and duration. Angina is typically described as substernal chest pressure or heaviness which radiates to the left shoulder, arm, neck, or jaw. The symptoms usually last 2 to 10 minutes, rarely longer than 30 minutes. Atypical symptoms may include epigastric pain, indigestion, right arm pain, lightheadedness, nausea, or shortness of breath. Diaphoresis, palpitations, and weakness may also be present. Avoid the use of the word pain in questioning, as many patients will deny feeling pain even as they experience chest pressure or other symptoms. A 12-lead EKG should be obtained. During an episode of angina, the EKG may show ST segment changes and or T-wave inversion, or it may be normal. An EKG will also help identify the area of a heart infarction. Pharmacological measures as ordered by the physician should be administered. These may include oxygen, nitroglycerin, and aspirin. Supplemental oxygen increases the amount of oxygen available in the bloodstream. Nitroglycerin dilates the coronary arteries, thus increasing the blood supply to the heart. Nitroglycerin is first given sublingually. If the patient's symptoms are not relieved after three doses, an IV drip of nitroglycerin is usually ordered. In either case, the patient's blood pressure must be carefully monitored as nitroglycerin may dramatically lower the blood pressure. Aspirin inhibits platelet aggregation and the formation of prostaglandins and is usually administered as soon as a presumptive diagnosis of angina is made. For example, it is administered by paramedics in the field for any complaints of discomfort that might suggest angina. This is to protect the patient against possible infarction or death of the heart muscle as a result of blockage of the arterial blood supply. When the patient is stable and free of discomfort, a complete health history should be obtained and a physical exam performed, including chest x-ray, lab tests such as complete blood count or CBC, sodium, potassium, blood chemistry panel, cardiac enzymes, lipid profile, and coagulation studies. The patient may have trouble breathing or be diaphoretic. If there are current or recent indications of a myocardial infarction, the patient will usually be taken immediately to a special procedures room, commonly called a cath lab, for study of coronary arteries and possible percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty or PTCA, commonly referred to as angioplasty. The physician may choose instead to administer a thrombolytic agent to dissolve the clot and prevent further damage to the heart. If this is the case, the nursing staff needs to monitor the patient for potential complications, including internal or external bleeding. Oh, hi, Mom. Oh. How are you doing? I think I'm doing better. Feel better? They yeah. gave you something. They yeah. said that they Thank been... goodness. They did give me something. Yeah. Painful. It is the nurse's responsibility to provide help and information to the patient and family. Both patient and family depend on the nurse for timely information and emotional support. The nurse is often the only person in a position to explain to patient and family what is happening. Without this human contact, the effectiveness of the best medical treatment is reduced.